Good evening, everyone. I'd Karen. like to call tonight's um, public safety meeting to order, and we're going to start off with the agenda with a report. We have a report from our chief, who's on the our Zoom with us tonight, Chief Slavin. Good evening, everyone. Good, good uh, evening, Chief. Attaches a police clearance and juvenile contacts reports for the month of March 2023. Uh, you have the attachment there if there's any questions. Any questions for our chief from the commissioners? Mr. Chair. Commissioner Armin. Yeah, ju just a comment. Chief, thank you so much. Uh, I see that the, you know, the traffic citations are uh, uh, clearly representative of the fact that uh, the department is uh, stepping up uh, enforcement of speeding and, and traffic violations on our roads. Obviously, a huge um, uh, a huge request from the public and, uh, you know, and, and, you know, from the commissioners and you're delivering on your commitment to us. So that that is really appreciated. Thanks to you and thanks to all your officers. And, and then if you want to comment, that's fine. But I have a question also unrelated. I just like, thank you. So I'll make sure I pass that on so everybody gets that. I appreciate that. Yeah. Um, so uh, I just have a question about um, uh, parking enforcement issues. So I've had a couple of residents reach out to me recently about cars parking in front of fire hydrants and no parking zones, but, but they feel um, uh, sort of apprehensive about calling 911 to, uh, to report that. Um, I guess the first question is, uh, are our officers sort of keeping an eye out for those things? So if they see them on patrol, are they addressing it? And if a resident has that concern, um, should they be apprehensive about calling 911? First, let's get to the 911 calling thing. That's our that's our apparatus to get help out, all right? So uh, if there's an issue that someone needs to bring to our attention, that's the avenue to address it, 911. Um, our 911 dispatchers will prioritize it as far as importance goes, as far as getting it out to officers right away. If there are more serious issues, obviously a life or death issue like that, it's gonna take precedence over those things. So um, I encourage everyone, whenever we do community get togethers or meetings like that, that 911 is, is your, uh, your your way to get help to you, and you let them know what you have. They'll prioritize it, and they'll get it out to our officers in a timely manner. So um, please don't hesitate to use 911 to let us know that there's an issue somewhere. It could be an abandoned order or whatever the case is, and our officers will go out and follow up on that. Um, the parking enforcement is part of an officer's regular day. Um, you know, if there's a violation out there like that, you normally they would cite the violation. Um, so I'm not sure what happened in the case you cited there, but... Normally, that during the course of the day, if you come across the fire hydrant park, they will, they will write a parking ticket for that. Great. Th thank you for clarifying, Chief. It's much appreciated. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Yeah, Commissioner Rappaport. Thank you, Commissioner Arm. Thank you. Um, so I, I too, noticed, uh, you know, and appreciate uh, the various stops and citations. One of the things, though, that surprised me was it seemed to indicate that very few of those stops were for speeding. Uh, a, a very small percentage, at least. This I mean, they're the ones who are cited, Commissioner. I could, you could stop someone for speeding and cite another violation. Um, just because you're stopped for speeding does not necessarily in itself mean you're going to get a speeding ticket. You may get a ticket for another violation. You may get a ticket for something right. else. So so I, the probable cause for a stop may have been speeding, but they may not end up with a citation for speeding in the end, if that makes sense. Um, no, but you know, there may be another would, violation that gets cited in, in the process. I, I think... What it appeared to be was that there were very few, compared to the entire set of stops, very few were for speeding. And so my question was, what were the rest of them about? What were the majority of the stops if they weren't for speeding? I don't have that breakdown in front of me tonight, Commissioner. Um, you know, most of our stops were for violations that are committed in the officer's presence. Um, so it could be anything from a red light could be anything from, you know, not following a traffic sign or whatever the case being. Um, someone driving under with a suspended license, it could be it could be any of those things, uh, and including all of those things, actually, in there. Um, as I said, um, there's, a, there's a variety of violations that could come across, and uh, I don't, if I had it in front of me, I could break it down for you and tell you what it is. But just to let you know that if someone stops somebody for that, say the PC is probable cause is speeding, they stop for a speeding and they undercover other violations, they, they could cite them for the other violation. Just so you know, that happens occasionally, um, and that's part of it. Also, um, going back, remember where we're at, we're in March, and we're back a couple months behind here, catching up on some of the citations. So um, I try to get the details out there as, as best we can. 
with a lot going on this past couple months, uh, you know, we're going to get them back out there again. Um, you know, that's something that I like doing, getting it out there, getting to a trouble area and then loading it up and getting the word out, use the message boards, get the officers out there doing enforcement again, um, you know, to let, the, let everybody know we're out there paying attention to this, number one, two, and slow down and obey the traffic laws in our township. So um, we will be doing those, those organized details again. Um, part of that number you see when that goes up, you see that's a coordinated effort on, on our part, actually, to, to get out there and, and do specific speed enforcement. Um, sometimes that's a luxury when we have the personnel to do that. And I know how important that is. So I have been putting them together for the last two years, putting those details together to address those issues when they come up, try to get officers out there and addressing the speeding issue. So it is on our, our radar. In addition to that, I try to address complaints that come from the commissioners in that in that avenue as far as the radar signs and getting those things out there and increasing our presence out there as well. As I said many times before, this is a multi-pronged effort to try to address this issue. Enforcement being one avenue of it, education being the other. So that I, I try to push uh, out there to the public. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner Rappaport. <laughs> Any other? Um, and Chief, I want to sort of piggyback on um, Commissioner Armin. Um, when when there's a vehicle that's illegally parked, say in front of a hydrant or blocking someone, we can get. Can we tow that vehicle, or just all we can do is ticket the vehicle? Or how can we get that vehicle to be removed? if it's illegally parked in front of a hydrant? There's certain criteria for when we can tow a vehicle. Obviously, if it's creating, creating public danger, we'll move the vehicle, we'll tow the vehicle. Mm -hmm. um, that's, the, that's the yardstick we'll use for that. Um, you know, but most of the time we cite it or we try to attempt to locate the owner of the vehicle. Most, most times often, or more often than not, I should say, excuse me, we'll try to locate the owner as well um, if it's something like that before we tow it. Um, so they, even if they did cite it, they would attempt to try to get the person to move it, say if it's blocking the hydrant. We'd run the tag, find out who it belongs to, if it's a local tag, you know, cite the car and then try to get them to get it out of there so we don't have to tow it. Uh, that's that's normal procedure. That's normal practice here. So we've always okay. done with that to so try to do that. Okay. All right. And then I have a couple of questions about the your report from March. I see the numbers for retail thefts and auto thefts have really um, kind of jumped up there and spiked during the month of March. Can you yeah. sort of ensure a reference to the retail thefts? What's that? What do you think that is? And with the auto thefts, ensure the residents and tell them what they need to do to sort of prevent their vehicles from yes. being on this I, list. Again, I'll refer to the March statistics when we were seeing the Kia and Hyundai theft increase at its peak almost at that point. We have seen a decline in that, um, that those number of thefts, but they still are occurring. I see them daily on the roster sheet. I see those type of incidents, the, attempt, the attempted uh, vehicle thefts, the vehicle thefts, we're still seeing them. So um, the number and, and, and frequency of these are, are dropping. They are dropping on that end of it. But I think that's attributed to that Kia Hyundai issue uh, that we, we broadcast and we gave out the car locks for and all that in response to it. Um, but we are still seeing trickle, trickle effect of those type of things on those type of vehicles still. Um, so we've made rest on that still. And, you know, someone else seems to step in, um, you know, and fill that void with the next one. So. Um, most of it's still kids, it's still kids involved with this, joy riding cars, uh, unfortunately, as, as we've talked about in the past with the with the TikTok challenge thing. So I think a lot of that is the byproduct of that TikTok and the thing we've been dealing with all along with Hyundai and Kia. As far as the retail theft goes, um, we had 71 reported retail thefts March of 23, up from uh, 39 from the previous year. Uh, so I said a significant increase in those. Again, I contribute a lot of that to more and more people being out and about. Um, than, than prior. Um, and, you know, the frequency of retail theft, every little retail theft incident gets recorded. Um, as I was saying uh, to you earlier, sir, you know, we're, we're logging retail thefts. We get that, that uh, theft at the Wild Wild where someone goes in and grabs a handful of stuff and runs out. These, these things, we add them up over the end, even though it's an insignificant amount at that point, you know, you get, it still counts as a retail theft incident that, kills, that still, you know, impacts our, our crime rate. So um, you know, I'm not downplaying them at all. I mean, these are ongoing problems. These are problems we see every day at certain locations. And, you know, the numbers aren't surprising in that way because I listen to the radio and you hear them going out there time and again uh, yeah. for retail theft. So that is definitely on the increase. Um, you know, I see domestic violence also up, uh, you know, this time for the reasons for that are varied as well. I know we've talked about that in the past as well. Why do we see a spike in now? Um, you know, I'm not sure. I'm not sure exactly what that's contributed to. Exactly. If I wish I could figure that out, and you know, we'd address that immediately. Whatever the cause, root cause us with that. But we are seeing increase in there as well. Does does what I, I know it? It takes a lot of man hours with these retail thefts for your staff. 
Um, I thought the new, the Wawa on 309, do they have security there? I thought they had security there. You're on mute, you're on mute, Chief. My bad, sorry about that. <laughs> Cough and I turned it off. Uh, Lieutenant Snyder, can you comment on that, please, with the detail and, and how we handle those and what Wawa offers as far as their security? Yeah, absolutely. So uh, about <laughs> six or eight months ago, Wawa contracted with a private security company uh, to have a uniform security officer in the store, which really didn't have any kind of deterrent effect whatsoever uh, wow. to the, the thefts going. So recently, wow. about, a, about a month or uh, about five weeks ago now, we reached out to Wawa and explained to them our, our conundrum with the increasing calls for service and criminal activity on the property. So they agreed to um, uh, uh, get a detail officer there on a rotating four hour a day basis. So we now have a police officer assigned to the store that's being paid for by Wawa uh, four hours a day, seven days a week on a rotating schedule uh, as a deterrent. And it seems to uh, have had a positive effect uh, in the calls for service as well as the, the crimes coming out of the store. Thank you. We're trying to do that randomly as well, switching the times up to when, uh, based on data, using a, da a data-driven approach to when we'd be most effective having people out there as well. So um, they did step up. That was one of our last conversations. We talked about them. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, I'll, I'll give them credit for that. They did step in and say, yeah, okay, they acknowledged the issue with that, and they were willing to work with us and try to approve that. Did that does that affect your manpower at all, having that officer over there? Those that's off duty they pay out of their own pocket to pay for the officer to be there who's off duty so it doesn't okay. affect the, the uh, manpower i have on the street at that particular time actually it adds to it you know, have an extra officer on it available if something were to break now that's just the wawa <laughs> 309 are we having any similar issues with the wawa and glenside no not to that extent there the, the, the wawa and no guns out seems to be primarily the issue also the school district had stepped up i want to uh let everybody know that as well. I had conversations with Dr. Scriven and uh, the principal over at uh, Cheltenham High School, uh, Dr. DeAndre, uh, again, stepped up. What do you need us to do to help uh, with early dismissals and those type of things? Um, as you know, we had the one football game that broke um, after the football game. Uh, you know, not only Cheltenham kids, everybody from the neighborhood uh, and went into the store and kind of overtook the store. We had an incident uh, back in the beginning of September and uh, you know, I, I brought that to their attention. We had conversations about that, and they they've stepped up. They've had staff over there at the at the Wawa during dismissals um, to try to act as a deterrent. Kids going hanging out in the store, just rummaging through the store and grabbing whatever. So that has made a difference as well. Again, lots of hands helping out. Not only us, a lot of a lot of other places helping to make a difference with that. And we're trying to reduce those numbers. Thank you, Commissioner Armin. Did I see your hand? It, you know, it, it was up, but I, I, uh, you asked the question. I was going to ask if it's a, a, you know, an outside job, not not taken away from the manpower. And and, and since I have the, the microphone for a second, it, I'm so glad to hear that, that this is working out because uh, I, I think even this morning in, in the report from yesterday, there were like five calls five. between yeah. uh, mm -hmm. midnight yeah. last night yeah. or the night before and, and mm -hmm. like 7 a.m. So uh, it, it, it's it's a good solution. Um, hopefully it serves as not only a deterrent while they're there, but um, but but other times as well. So uh, gr great, great work to uh, coordinate with the local business on that. And uh, uh, it's much appreciated. Yeah. Thank you, Commissioner Harmon. Any other questions from our commissioners in reference to <coughs> our report for our chief for the month of March? Hearing and seeing none. Um, all right, I call for the approval of uh, item 1A for tonight. All those in favor, say aye. 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 So we're gonna move on to 1B, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for calculated kinetics in the amount of $3,134.75 for the purchase of 75 dog tag mountain mounting plates for the previous approved red dot sites that will be mounted to the department issue Glock 17 firearm. And this is being used, they're using the assets forfeiture funds um, for this purchase. Chief, you wanna give us a little yes. explanation? Yes, this, this may sound familiar to you. We just yes. approved this purchase. Yeah. So right. I, I wanna let uh, Lieutenant Snyder explain why uh, we're hearing about this again tonight with right. your valuable time. That's what I was wondering. Andy, if you could comment on that and why we're here tonight with this. Yeah, absolutely. So as you all recall, this was a previously approved expenditure, uh, I believe in February or March. Uh, for a program that we're implementing in the fall. We'll, we'll be attaching 
red dot sighting systems to our issued handguns. In doing some additional research since the initial uh, purchase order was approved, we found a vendor that was able to provide a higher quality product at a lower cost. Uh, however, it is above the $2,500 threshold, so we needed to present it again for approval. So essentially, this is going to replace a component of the previously approved purchase order, and it's going to save the township uh, about $1,600. Excellent. That's what I want to know. That's what I want to know. Thank you. Any questions at all, commissioners? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the approval of item 1B for tonight. Yes, all those in favor of approving 1B say aye. 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 And, our, and our thanks to the police for watching out for our expenses. Thank you. Thank you. All right, we have an item that was added. Um, item 1C, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order for the Pennsylvania State Police in the amount of $5,306.04 for the use of the department's ISDN line, which provides authorized personnel with a, a direct access to the Commonwealth Law Enforcement Assistance Network. And that information is attached. Chief, I don't know if you want to give us an explanation of commissioners. Just so we can cover that one. real quick. This is a, a, an annual expense. Uh, this covers our clean cost from um, June 23 until July uh, 24 uh, is the coverage of this. And Lieutenant Senator, can you just tell them what clean is? Yeah. and how we utilize that real quickly. Yeah, so basically uh, each state is responsible for being the conduit to the, the federal uh, criminal justice information network. Uh, so Pennsylvania State Police named their program CLEAN, the Commonwealth Law Enforcement Assistance Network. Uh, and this provides uh, secure access that the department needs in order to do those criminal justice transactions that were required to do submit fingerprints, access criminal histories, things that um, without this access, we wouldn't be able to do our jobs effectively. Great. Commissioner Pransky, I see your hand. Yeah, uh, Chief, they're, st they're still using ISDN lines? Yes, sir. Are they aware we've gone way past that? I'm off of Pennsylvania, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I got some old dial up modems. If they <laughs> I still have my AOL account we can use too if we need that. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Any, any other questions or sarcastic remarks from commissioners? <laughs> it was an honest question. Oh, that's true. So, I, I mean, honestly, in, 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 in all seriousness, it's, it, uh, to my belief, it's part of because of how rural parts of the state are that don't have uh, high-speed internet access and things like that. That's why they the network hasn't really caught up to technology just because of how rural most of Pennsylvania is. Yeah. Um, but that's kind of where we're at. Okay. Thank you, Lieutenant Snyder. Um, any questions, can, any more additional questions concerning item 1C? If not, I call for the approval of that for tonight. Uh, all those in favor of approving 1C say aye. 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 All right, thank you. And if there is nothing else, uh, Chief, are you gonna stay on? For the, yes. Okay, great. All right, fantastic. So we're gonna move on to item two for tonight is the report for the fire marshal for the month of March, 2023. I do see Mr. Lynch. Good evening, yeah. Commissioner. Yes, good evening, Mr. Lynch. Are there any questions concerning our fire marshal's report for the month of March, or I will take both, or receipts of the fire marshal board minutes for the month of April? <sighs> any questions at all? If Scott, not, do you I have anything? That. Do you have yeah, anything that you want to add? Here. Go ahead. So um, I just wanted to talk so far about this week because you, you won't get the information until July, the way the reports run two months behind. Um, so we had a, uh, yesterday we had a significant fire at 7806 uh, Cobden Road. Uh, we're still in the investigation part of that, but uh, there was a family, sorry, sorry. It's not, it's not my dog guys, it's not this time. Dog. <laughs> some choice Sorry. words to say yeah anyway um so it's a rental property um al and i have had dealings with the property we got a file about yay thick on the property michael bluestein's oh. involved with us so um we're working through some issues there uh, i'll be meeting with the insurance company at 10 o'clock friday morning out there to go over a couple things um 
The second issue that happened this week, uh, yesterday, prior to the fire on Cobden, we had an incident at Cheltenham High School. We had uh, three juveniles uh, discharge several fire uh, smoke bombs, several smoke bombs in a bathroom, which activated the system. Bathroom had smoke in it, the hallway had smoke in it. Um, so after the incident, I sat with the principal, the vice principal. Um, we had the parents on the phone, Dr. Red Crivens on board. School is going to suspend these individuals and uh, I am going to submit uh, stuff to the judge tomorrow for uh, criminal charges against them. Uh, what the judge decides to do is up to him, but uh, we're, you know, discharging the smoke. It, even if one student in that area had asthma and inhaled this, it could have been catastrophic. So that in itself for me is enough to take it to the judge. Uh, I'm letting you all know this uh, ahead of time. And I obviously am going to follow up with emails after I present this to the judge and we'll figure out best course of action. Um, so that uh, that's where we're at with that. Does anybody have any questions on either one of those? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Zignifo. Uh Scott, a question. We had issues with the uh, the activation and centralization of the fire alarm system at the high school. Did that work as per the, the changes that you had uh, overseen or required? Yes, actually. And uh, there was a maintenance ban in the area when the alarm went off. He, as soon as he entered the hallway and saw the smoke, he called 911 and told them there's smoke in the building. And it was never dispatched as a fire alarm. The, the dispatch was for a commercial building. So we didn't have to wait and get there and find smoke. I mean, it initially went out as a commercial building response. Great, good, thank you. Um, the school also, uh, like I said, they, they got everybody out of there. They got everybody away from the bus loading platform. Uh, they had actually, they had everybody, instead of being on a bus loading platform, cause that's, I've had issues with that before. I've addressed it. They had all the kids down on the ball field uh, off of uh, Panther by Rice's Mill. So we had the apparatus had complete access to the hydrant and there was no interference from staff or students. So I made my uh, I made my point with the principal and I'm getting great cooperation from him at this time. Mr. Chairman. Hey, yes, Commissioner Armin. So uh, Scott, um, I I'm wondering if um, uh, with respect to the the um, sort of allegation of, of criminal charges, which have charges, right. um, obviously, look, not to diminish the situation, right? We have, um, we have uh, a prank or smoke bombs, whatever it is that causes a huge response. Not only does it require volunteers to leave their jobs, they have to drive apparatus. Uh, it, there's uh, a huge economic burden um, there is, uh, you know, traveling on the, these apparatus at high rates of speed through the township. It's dangerous. Um, so I'm not diminishing the situation at all, but I guess I'm questioning whether um, there is an, uh, another option. Obviously, these kids um, are going to have repercussions in the school itself with suspensions and whatnot. Um, <coughs> perhaps there are uh, citations that can be issued to the kids or their families, but um, I do have some concerns about the township taking a position, and I don't know if these are repeat offenders, I don't know any of those details, um, but taking harsh uh, criminal uh, action against these these kids when, um, you know, they probably just did something stupid. Um, and, and certainly they did. So uh, I have, uh, I do have some apprehension about that. So maybe you can speak yeah, to that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I, I mean, I understand that. Uh, the, the juveniles involved in this incident are repeat offenders with uh, things going on at the high school. Uh, so uh, like I said, I'm going to give this to the judge and let him decide. I mean, you can look at this many different ways, but again, Risking a catastrophe comes to mind. I mean, like I said, you have one child with asthma that comes out of a classroom and inhales this and has an asthma attack. And we have a serious situation because of a prank. And, you know, uh, 
I'm yeah, just no, I, I, look, I, I understand that, but you could, say, you, know, you could say. I mean, maybe community service or something like that. I understand that, but this is unacceptable. Um, and, you know, uh, we, I understand the commissioner's position and taking a stance on this and everything like that. But uh, I think. Yeah, uh, I, I, I think if it's the town, I think it's the, if it's the township, township. that's going to refer the charges to the judge, um, maybe, um, I don't know if Ed's here, but maybe we need to uh, um, ensure yeah. that the township is, yeah. uh, it, um, is all on board with it and, and understands yeah. all the implications. So maybe it's something we, we need to discuss in executive session at some point first. Yeah, I, I, 100% agree with Commissioner Harmon. Um, I know, Scott, you said they were repeat offenders, but was the offense similar? Um, was it, did they do this, you know, this smoke bomb several times? Was this the first time? Um, I don't want kids who are just uh, are goofing off and doing something that's really bad to become, um, to have criminal charges brought against them for something like this. Um, this could change, change their lives. So let's let's take a look at this, um, and let's let Ed take a look at it to, to make sure that um, we're doing the right thing on this. I, I do want to ask you though, Scott, about the family. Um, did this family in Glenside? Do you know if they have renters insurance? So it's my understanding that they did not have renters insurance, um, and that was that was in their lease. The person that owns the house took possession of a house of the house through a share sale not quite a year ago and he put in his lease um so the the owner actually failed to make sure that the, they had run their insurance but he put it in the lease anyway so um uh, there is significant uh fire damage uh throughout the house there's a lot of heat and smoke damage what the fire didn't get and then water mm -hmm. damage uh, okay so and as the pictures, did, I, I sent out uh, some of the initial pictures to mm -hmm. you guys, so you can you can see the devastation early on. Yeah. So this home has only been rented for about a year, um, and so they did not have a, a renter's insurance policy. Um, I'm also wanting to know: was there any type of violation with the number of dogs and, and animals that they had? They had five dogs, my understanding, and one cat. Um, so what's you're correct. There was five dogs. The renter was uh, breeding the dogs. Ah. Um, it was discovered yesterday. So he was kind of running a business out of the home without uh, without a business license and things like that. So there's uh, there's some other things coming into play with this investigation. As we go further into it, we're uncovering. Okay. Um, I've already um, been in touch with the tax office also. Uh, with uh, a couple of things regarding this. Okay. So he was running this business, didn't have rent his insurance, and I guess didn't have insurance for the business that he was running either. Yeah, no. I would assume. Okay. No. Commissioner Lewis? Uh, I would yield to uh, a Jeff Cherico. He had his hand up first. Okay. Um, Thank you. Will I be allowed to have, because that wouldn't be part of Oh, that's right. He's not a commissioner. commissioner yes, not, not yet. Not All yet. right, Jeff, you <laughs> so have Jeff, to wait, man. Jeff, hold, you wait your turn. In, keep going for your. Now walk, wait man. your turn, bro. <laughs> you get keep getting those steps in. <laughs> Thank you, um, right. Scott. I was just uh, I wanted to ask: Is there what, what are the options from your vantage point other than taking the charges to the judge? I certainly agree with Commissioner Armin, uh, as well as uh, Commissioner Brockington as to one, we should look into it before the township brings charges against the family. But are there other alternatives from your vantage point? Yeah, I mean, my position was going, when we when I went to the judge, was uh, to have a conversation about this um, and see, you know, what we could do as far as uh, some type of program or community service type of thing, something like that, okay? Um, Maybe criminal charges was a poor choice of words. I admit that. But yeah. um, uh, again, I'm looking at, uh, at a rather big picture here. And, you know, just because three goofballs want to do this, there's, there's 
1,497 other students in that school that are affected by this, you know? And um, there was, that was the second trip to the high school that day. The first trip was uh, a problem with a pull box and they're in the middle of AP testing. We, I mean, there are quite a few students that go to school for their education and this is disrupting, this is just disruptive in, a, in a nature in itself. So, um, Listen, I, I, this is why I brought it up tonight. Um, I answer to you guys. So you tell me to, uh, you want to talk about it in an executive session with Ed. I won't, you know, I'm not going to go to the judge tomorrow and talk to him until I hear back from you guys. Thanks, Scott. Thank you. Um, so I'm going to defer to my commissioners. Are we letting uh, public comment on this? Now, or we're going to wait till the end for public comment. I just will allow it now because I know I have slightly different. I, I really appreciate Matt's view on this. I really do. He uh, probably has more experience than I do, but I'm a, you know, actions have consequences kind of oriented person. So I'll, I'll defer to everybody else, but I think we should take what limited public comment there is. All right, Jeff, go ahead and jump in. My only question uh, was whether or not we have explored the use of the county's youth aid panel um, for for offenders like this to avoid a criminal record. Uh, that's something I know uh, D.A. Steele has been uh, pushing, and I'm just not quite sure if that's something that our township uh, regularly uses or um, even considers. Chief, Chief, Chief can you jump yes, in? Yes, sir. We are, we are members of that youth aid panel here in Cheltenham Township. Um, I don't want to step on Scott's. That's exactly how this would be treated, commissioners. Um, we'd go to the district justice. The district justice would, would hear what happened here. And then, you know, based on this uh, prior records of these individuals, depending, you know, I don't know how many times they may have been in front of the judge, maybe the first time. I'm big on first time break on that as well. Um, I'm not looking to, to uh, set somebody down the wrong road, but we address juveniles that way. We're already doing that. We will do that. And part of that is having the youth aid panel to, to go with a diversionary program or some other stuff. We've used Judge Sersky in the past for this numerous times yeah, yeah. over the last 30 years. And he has a way of doing that, um, bringing the severity of the incident to their attention, letting them know that a, you know, a, you know, a volunteer <clears throat> firefighter could have had a heart attack responding there with an apparatus and crashed into somebody else and killed a family coming to a smoke bomb. I know it's ridiculously out outrageous the more and more you add on to it, but you know what I'm saying with that, right? So we have yeah. to let them know the, se the severity of this incident as well. And the judge does a good job of that. And I think part of that is like, here's what we're going to do. You're going to do X, Y, and Z, you know, as, as to, to, to raise your awareness level to what's going on around you. And, you know, the, the amount of work that the volunteer firefighters do in our community, that type of thing. So he's very much in tune with that and looking to give, you know, offenders that, that have committed, like you said, a, a prank that went bad, opportunities to recover from that. Um, that's, that's the criminal justice today. That's criminal justice for juveniles here in Montgomery County and in Shelton Township. So, Mr. Chairman, if, if I may, could I make a suggestion <laughs> that that we sort of defer this conversation to the yes. executive session? Because right in addition to the fact, I know we've been talking about it, but mm -mm. I, I'd be that's, fearful that's that we'd um, so, sort of uh, identify anybody. And also, it'd be helpful for us, I think, to understand a little better what the... Um, what the process is because frankly I, you know I, i'm being enlightened by uh by fire marshal lynch and and chief slavin as yeah. we speak well, so. the the one thing that i would say is that i completely have trust in jeff tersky i think that um he deals with our youth in this township all the time and i think scott taking it to him i think that uh, the judge he does have this panel and um i i, I do have confidence in him Commissioner and 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 our and our fire marshal, Commissioner. I, I support uh, Matt Arman. I just wanted to make a comment based on what the chief just said. Uh, I am in full support of the diversion program. In fact, I am a new member of the UFA panel for Shelton. Okay, fantastic. Mm -hmm. All right, guys. Um, Mr. Lynch, anything else? Um, no. I, next time, I uh, I just a comment to Commissioner Dwight there. I'm coming to you next time so you can help me with better. That's all. Um, no. And that, no. and again, this, so criminal, no, criminal charges was probably a poor choice of words, but I wanted to take it to the judge and, you know, right. 
to see what he wanted to do with this again. So um, that's fine. So uh, I'm going to, I'm going to do what now? Cause uh, you want me to go and try and get them through this program or do you want me to wait till you have an executive session? No. Uh, what is the I, general I, 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 I would suggest uh, my suggestion is that we need a little more information to understand what the process is and, and then and then mm -hmm. we certainly can uh, if that's the right process then then fine but but I, I think uh, I for one need a little more information okay what information uh, did you say you, you think you need from charm uh, uh, I'd like to find out more about this youth aid panel, what the process is and, and, and that sort of thing. What what actions have been taken at the school, what conversations have had with the parents um, and, and that sort of thing. OK. All right, Scott, are you OK with giving us getting providing that information to us? Absolutely. Absolutely. OK. You know, and I want you to I, and I and I understand your frustration with having to go to the school time again, time and again. You know, for these kids doing goofy things, um, I totally get it, um, and I know it's frustrating for you and and the firefighters to have to do this um, for for you know, and and it costs money to the township to run those trucks. I totally get it, um, but I think that hopefully there's there's something that we can do to stop the kids from doing this. To just you know, we just have to stop them from doing this, and I think the schools will work along with us with that. So I'm going to call for the approval of item two and item two, the report of the fire marshals for the month and item 2A, the receipt of the board minutes for April 6. All those in favor of uh, um, receiving the report of the fire marshal and the fire board minutes say aye. 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 Thank you, Mr. Lynch. We're going to go on to item three, report of the emergency medical service chief for the month of March 2023. And I don't know, did I see Jess? I'm here, hi. Oh, there you go. Hey Jess, how are you? <laughs> good, how are you? Good, good. Thank you for your report. Are there any questions from the commissioners in reference to our report? Question, Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld. So Jess, um, have, have you already arranged uh, that, you know, the shift from Elkins Park to Abington and or if Gene has the availability for the emergency uh, room services. Okay, so I have been in talks with um, the Jefferson Einstein system um, about this entire transition. We've been going over this pretty extensively over the past couple of weeks. Um, Gene's hospital just added nine new beds to their emergency room and they are um, starting an additional expansion mid-June. They were unaware this was started before the Elkins Park announcing that they were closing. So um, <clears throat> they, uh, Jean said that they are anticipating about a uh, 3,000 patient a month increase uh, between walk-ins and ambulances. Um, so they are working on increasing their staffing um, and, you know, in order to attempt to accommodate this as much as possible. Um, so Elkins Park is officially closing their emergency room on June 30th. They are going to also be transporting the patients that are inpatient medical patients on the floors out to Einstein main campus and or Abington Jefferson. They have contracted with uh, transport ambulances uh, to attempt to uh, perform this prior to June 30th. They are going to um, close the emergency room for ambulances at 6 p.m. on the 30th. They're going to still have staff until midnight. They're going to allow walk-ins um, and do as much treatment as they can. And then they're going to completely shut down their emergency room. We are attempting to uh, work with them to see about getting an ALS ambulance uh, from Cheltenham up, an, an additional ambulance 
to sit in the emergency room area for people who do not know that the emergency room is closed and come up to the emergency room for treatment if they are sick or injured and cannot get safely to another uh, hospital, um, then we would take over and we would transport them. Um, this is something that you know we kind of feel like is important so that people aren't put in jeopardy or at risk. I see Brad's hand up. Commissioner Pransky, go ahead. Hi, um, Jessica, I appreciate all the things you've said and I think they're important. Um, my question is a general one. I know they're part of Jefferson. Um, what is their responsibility to the township? I mean, they're a nonprofit that has enjoyed that status in our township for decades. I mean, since I was a child here, um, do they feel they have no obligation as far as the health and welfare of our residents to just say, bye? That's a fine question, sir. Um, unfortunately, we have, you know, Cheltenham EMS, has had zero input into this uh, decision. Um, their staff, many of their staff found out that this was happening less than 24 hours before they made the official statement to close. So I don't know that, um, I don't know what their responsibility is for the township. Um, I do know that as of July 1st, they will no longer be a, uh, a hospital per se. They will be strictly rehab. a rehab facility. Um, I don't know what the township's policies are uh, in effect, you know, in that vein, since they're no longer a hospital with an emergency room. I really don't know what, what the township spying is on that. Mr. Chairman. Commissioner Zingman, though. So I've had, I, I've exchanged, uh, messages with Bill Ryan, who is the uh, governmental representative for now Abington Jefferson. And I will get back to him tomorrow and ask some pointed questions because um, what Jess is presenting suggests that we're gonna be in, in somewhat of a quandary. When you're required to go into an ER, sometimes there's deferments because they can't take additional personnel. So what happens if, if Abington, for whatever reason, gets to a deferment level. Uh, is there sufficient capacity at genes? And then what are our additional backups? So I think we have a right to be able to request some accommodation and, and I'm happy to do that. Having had, uh, we've done some, um, some solids, so to speak for, for Einstein in the past in, in our relationship with them and, and protecting their interests, particularly across uh, township line. So I'm happy to pursue that, and I, you know, if need be, I'll get in touch with our uh, council and ask him to join me if if any meetings are set up. Thank you, Commissioner Zygmunt. Hey, Jess, can I ask you a question? How long yes, are sir. you guys going to be out there with your vehicle? Like, how many so, days or weeks are you going to be out there? They are. Uh, they were talking about um, 24 to 72 hours. Um, oh, just will, just for we, just for two days. Uh, yes, they are also going to have security um, at the facility to attempt to take the people who, you know, drive in because they, you know, they they have a broken toe. Um, you know, they don't necessarily need an ambulance to transport them to another emergency room. So mm -hmm. um, the security will be directing them on how to get to one of the surrounding hospitals. And if somebody comes in that is having a medical issue that is going to require immediate attention, that's whenever um, the ambulance service would step in. We are, I did quote them our standby rate um, because if we're putting up an additional ambulance and we are committed to the emergency room, if no one requires an ambulance, it's still going to cost us money. Yes, can you tell us and, what that standby rate is? Our standby rate is two hundred dollars an hour. Um, <clears throat> so the other issue is we're trying to figure out the impact that this is going to have for Cheltenham Township EMS in the future, because as of right now, 
if someone is in the rehab and something happens, like a feeding tube comes out, they get abnormal lab values back, um, you know, things like that. They'll be sent down to the emergency room for treatment and then they'll be sent back up to the floor in the same facility. That's no longer going to be an option. So I've been speaking with the hospital, um, the administrators of the emergency department, and they understand that things that obviously like a feeding tube coming out or you know abnormal lab values is not a 911 emergency and it is not appropriate to call 911 for. However, if someone is having chest pain, they're going to have to call 911 and we will have to treat Einstein, Elkins Park, Jefferson as a, for lack of a better term, a, a, an assisted living facility, you know, one of our one of our nursing homes, assisted living facilities, rehab facilities. So it will be possibly an additional uh, uh, burden on our, uh, our staff and our services that we can't even possibly attempt to predict. Yeah. Hmm. Any, that's, it's frightening. Is there any other comments from commissioners in reference to this? Yes, can no. we talk tomorrow? Sure, no problem. Okay, thanks. Yeah. Do yeah. we think it makes sense to invite uh, the, the representative to come to a meeting and, and uh, uh, answer some questions about the, the process and, and what, what their vision is and how they intend to uh, address the concerns of the community and the township in general? Sure. My intention what? has been to try and have a discussion exactly to those ends. And now that I know you've already made some offer, Jess, that you made offers and commitments, I think we have to escalate it. So yes. I guess my question would be what would, what would we do if they say they don't feel that they need to come before us because the decision is made? I, I don't see the what's the incentive for them to come before us. Just oh, they want to be they, they want to be community partners. The, this the decisions that they made here may not indicate that, but uh, right, um, they have to come to the table, and I will join with uh, Mitch from the Senate vantage point as opposed to commission. Thank you, thank you. Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, well, I was, I was also going to say, I think bringing them to a public meeting is the appropriate way to go uh, because it is a public health question. But before we get too hysterical about it, the other thing is um, when, when we read the monthly um, ambulance reports, um, they're the second I think over time, they're usually the second most important uh, site that you all take patients to, right? Abington yes. being the first, and yes, they're numerically the second. And I think that's part of what we want to present, that this is at a high level of use, relatively high level, being the second, second most prominent and the only one, I believe, in our township borders. Mm -hmm. So I think those are the issues that that need to come to um, to the floor. And uh, you know, again, I it is a public health issue, and I think they need to, to come talk to us about it. Okay. Do we need to have our township manager reach out to set this meeting up? I know Allison's on. Do we need to to do this immediately? To to reach out. And it wouldn't hurt, uh, you know, what, what Commissioner and, Sigmundfeld uh, was just, saying also about um, uh, having Abington appear, uh, bring them both, bring both Einstein. Yeah, and I think um, maybe even having um, our state Senator Haywood um, on board with this also to make this meeting happen. So uh, Commissioner Lewis, I'm hoping that you can use some of your influence in, in ha making that happen. Okay, great. All right, so we're gonna um, we're gonna move on to call for the approval of item three, the report from Emergency Medical Service Chief for the month of March, 2023. 
All those in favor of uh, accepting the report of EMS for March 23, say aye. 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 Good. We're going to move on now to report to the emergency management coordinator for the month of April 23, Mr. Hillendorf. Good evening. I Who think I have most... better news than just did. Um, we learned today that um, there is actually been good follow up from aqua um, and the weather has turned and they have been in contact with the fish commission and we will be setting a date for restocking curtis um, after the um, flood from last year we did not forget that but it had to be above a certain temperature and da -da 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 -da. Um, we will notify the friends of curtis park when that date is chosen it's my understanding that the fish have already been ordered and we're just waiting for the weather to, st to stay warm. So, um, and this is the first time Aqua has ever done it. So um, we we scored well on this one. Um, and I have a question. Do you think yes, this sir. will be done before school is out and no. maybe we can get the kids? I don't know. No, uh, no, okay. Uh, I, I I can't answer that question. That's um, being worked on between the Fish Commission and Aqua. I can try and find out, um, but um, no. I think she, she was worried about the still cold nights. There, there's okay. another issue. Here, here. Stay tuned for the uh, presentation in Public Works about the ponds because there are other issues that need to be discussed and we need to coordinate with what's going to go on with the health of the ponds and some of those challenges. Right. So I, this is this is premature. Okay, that, that's that's fine. In public affairs. Yeah, in public affairs, there's going to be a presentation and some discussion about uh, remediation of certain aspects of the ponds, and I don't think we can go ahead with the fish in that site, but. I'll wait and let the experts talk about that. But uh, yeah, th there there needs to be some serious coordination. Um, they've they've made the commitment, so we can we can certainly put it off. Thank you, Ken. Thank you, Commissioner. Um, um, the only other thing is that we've um, we are making good progress with calling all of the apartment houses and stuff for our work with the elderly. Um, and we'll get back to you when there's um, definite uh, progress and stuff to report. That's all I have. Okay. Thank you. Any questions in, in reference to Ken's report? All right, we're going to move on to item 4A, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners approve a purchase order from Inmar Marine Group in the amount of $22,119.90 for the purchase of two water rescue task force boats and two motors and the accessories to go along with these two items. Ken, talk a, and sure. about the boat. So we've always had two boats and several years ago, I mean, the fire departments had them, we had one, they had one, and they both got destroyed by, uh, one was destroyed in Tukany when it hit a rock during a storm. Um, and since we have no large facility to store them, they were stored outside. So after the um, Water Rescue Task Force did a lot of work, I mean, a lot, um, these are foldable. And so they will be stored inside a building, which reduces um, the use. Um, they, Joe Dishler, whom some of you know, who is on the, the county's water rescue team, um, suggested these as the best possible. Um, the chief of the team did all the research. Uh, there are three quotes. This was the lowest quote not available on CoStars, and we are asking for approval so that we can get them in time for June, which is when the rainy season begins. Okay. Well, is this a part of our budget? Is this a budget yes. item? Okay. Okay. Any any additional questions? Commissioner Rapsdag, Um. Ken, frankly, just a question: Why the need for two boats? Yeah. I know that you lost one, and and you know, or, or maybe possibly from what you described, you lost two. But um, could we function with just a single boat yeah. rather than going uh, to the two. That that's a question, by the way. I'm just channeling Dan Norris. 
Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I was going to ask that question. Um, because we learned the hard way, um, we always assumed that Tukany would be the only place to flood. And that's where our boat was when Harrison Avenue and Waverly and all that flooded. And so we have determined we need two. The other thing is all the new protocols um, call for having a backup. So um, we are actually using Abington and somebody else as our backup when we have boats in, in the water. But the, the logic is one east and one west. And you also mentioned that there's issues with storage. So where, in fact, would one of them be stored um, at a fire company and the other um, in wherever the EMC but stores their, their, their apparatus? These are completely foldable and can be set up in about eight minutes or less. Um, so storage is not an issue. We used to have the, the pre-inflated rafts and those were a problem because they had to be on a trailer. These do not. Okay. Commissioner you. Nars. Yes. Um, uh, Ken, so uh, did I just hear you say that Abington also has a boat? Um, most of the people around us do have boats because we all flood at the same time. And it, in fact, for the last three floods, Abington has called us and said, you're about 10 minutes away, and they were spot on. And we now have that set up all the way up. So um, we work with each other. And in our capital budget that uh, we approved for 2023, we, yes, sir. we put in two boats? Yes, sir. OK. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions? Hearing and seeing none, I call for the approval of item 4A, which is the purchase of two water rescue task force boats. All those in favor say aye. 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 Any opposed? Great. Any opposed? No? All right. Thank you, Ken. We're going to move on tonight to old business. We do have a couple items. I think one item um, to vote on and an old business is for item 5A, Park Mobile Implementation Update. One, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners authorize township staff to draft an ordinance amending Chapter 285 Vehicle and Traffic, Article 2, Parking Meter Zone. Two, reflect the switch from coin operated meters and coins, cash, and credit card kiosks to a mobile parking application kiosk program and to redistribute two and 24 hour parking zones to facilitate a mobile parking application. One second. There's a 12 and, hour parking. And 12 hour parking, yes. Par yes, 12 hour, hour parking zones to facilitate a mobile parking application program and a removal of the certain parking meters. So I'll stop there, that's item number one. I just wanted to, we'll take them number at a time. Any questions in reference to item number one? Commissioner, I might jump in uh, and yes. then maybe have uh, Mike jump in further. Uh, so all these are, are related, all of A, and then under new business, um, B is, 6A is also slightly related. So when we um, were reviewing all the parking meter locations, um, there's a number of things we need to do to help with the implementation. Some of it involves amending the ordinance. Uh, some of it involves um, amending your fee resolution and all of the other items here. So um, we're not quite ready for the ordinance, So, but we wanted to let you know so that we can get started on making that amendment going forward. So I do have a question. In June, I think. Okay. I do have a question. It looks like we're just removing certain parking meters. We're not removing all the parking meters. Uh, yes. Yes. Yes, Rich. You want Which, me to jump in there, Allison? I was going to say, go ahead. Um, uh, yeah, I not my problem. Uh, so I guess uh, what what we're doing, uh, and there's three separate memos here. Uh, we're going to talk about the parking lots and some changes there, um, talking about those two streets that you mentioned, or if the plan is still to remove all the meters, uh, probably over the course of the next year uh, to do that. Uh, but right now it's just looking as we, as the planning team met, um, and we looked at all the locations and looked at where we can, you know, increase some uh, permit parking, residential permit parking, uh, you know, looking to remove meters at those streets. 
Um, and the reasoning for that is we're, we're getting all the signage done and giving all that information to Park Mobile. So we don't want to have to get the signs made up and things like that if we're not going to put meters there because we want to increase residential parking. This is also using kind of the data from uh, what Jen currently collects in coins to be able to make these decisions. Um, so if it's okay, I'll start off on the, the lots and just a brief explanation there. Um, I do want to give a quick thank you to the, the team in working on this. This is really a team effort um, between Allison, um, Chief Slavin, uh, Jen Clark, uh, Bo Coyle, Kyle Dermer, and Lauren. Uh, so we've been meeting and, and kind of working this process out to make, we, make sure we have a smooth implementation of Park Mobile into the township. So in looking at the lots, um, more or less the, the memo in front of you uh, for that is to uh, not remove spaces necessarily, but we have the two hour and 12 hour uh, parking spots and we want to just kind of reallocate and move around within those lots uh, to ensure the best parking experience and making it easy for the customer. So uh, I did in include some pictures there. The first lot that is shown is the uh, York Road lot. And the, the point of this is to use physical barriers uh, and then use utilizing public works and putting some writing on the street, as well as all the signage that's gonna go up um, to really make it easy. So if you'll look on the York Road lot, about halfway through there is uh, a, a a barrier, if you will, or a definition of half of the lot. So currently there's 20 uh, two hour spots and 40 12 hour spots. And surprisingly enough, they're kind of all over the place. Um, and Jen and, and the chief, if you have anything to, to add to this, but um, they're kind of all over the place. They're not really in any order. And I don't really think people would, would realize where they're parking, whether it's two hour tw or 12 hour. So the idea is to move half the lot to 32 hour spots, the other half of the lot to, um, excuse me, uh, 12, 30 hour spots. Um, Jen, Chief, anything else to add on that one? Any comments on that lot or questions? Mike? Yep, go ahead, Commissioner. So my question is, <clears throat> there, there as, as we've talked about in the past, there are a number of uh, apartment complexes where people would like to have the ability to park in those lots. And some of the landlords are willing to to allocate dollars or you know do a shared cost with their tenants and that kind of thing. Same thing with a number of the retail businesses where they want to have some extended period of time where they can make a, a financial commitment as part of the ability for their um, for their employees to be able to park. So I, I want to understand if that has been factored into how you're going to you know. Uh, reallocate those spots or if and if there's a way that we can quote unquote communicate and or sell this to both business owners and apartment uh, landlords who would like to be able to accommodate uh, their residents so and their employees so help me with that yep Mr. sure if I could jump no, in no go ahead um, you're actually uh, one step ahead that's something we'll be addressing in uh, new business but I can just kind of fill you in um, so we do have something in our current ordinance. We have residential and commercial um, parking permit program. Um, it's, unfortunately, I was not aware of the commercial aspect of it. Um, so that's something that I uh, wanted to ask the, the board for permission to take a look at. And I would recommend working with you, Commissioner Armin, and any other commissioners that have commercial uh, parking in their, in their award to, to see if what we have currently is appropriate. Um, right now it is, there's a, an annual fee for parking in uh, the 12 hour parking spaces in, in the existing lots or anywhere in the township. All right, any other? Mike, go ahead. Uh, yeah, uh, so, so thank you for that commissioner. Uh, we will definitely get to that. Um, I'll just run through the rest of the lots just to see if there's any questions and, and move to the next one. Um, Commissioner Brockington, if that's okay. Yes, go ahead. Um, the, uh, the Bickley lot, um, so utilizing again that natural barrier in the middle, uh, there are some spots on the left and some on the right for the various uh, parking times. So again, trying to make it uh, easier to park and uh, a little bit more common sense based off of lettering on the ground. So going from uh, 33 two-hour spots um, and 11, 12, to 22 and 22, so making it even across the board. And and uh, uh, as uh, Commissioner Zygmuntfeld, you mentioned, having more 12-hour spots will allow for more uh, long-term parking in that lot. 
Uh, hey, uh, can I just jump in real quick, yes, Mike? Um, I, I'm okay with this as a preliminary matter. I, I like the idea of increasing, particularly in this lot, increasing the number of 12 hour spots. But, but, but I, you know, this lot is so infrequently used. Um, it's practically empty all the time. Uh, as, as it, this is implemented, um, I think there'll be more of a demand for that commercial uh, parking permit. And um, uh, we should revisit or at least continue to analyze whether it makes sense to increase the number of 12 hour spots um, if, if the two hour spots are just not being not being utilized by visitors there. So um, I, do, I do think there may be an opportunity to increase the number there, but uh, but I'm OK with this as a starting point. Of course. And. Uh... And that is something that we'll be able to see with Park Mobile. We'll be able to see who's parking in in the two hours versus the twelve. That's um, great. The the uh, hey Mike, hey yes, Mike, can yeah. I have one second. I want to have um, Commissioner Pedro Lewis, Dwight Pedro Lewis. Yes. Yes. Quick question, uh, Mike: Is there a fee associated with the permit? Uh, yes. So the the commercial it, it is on the website. Mm -hmm. uh, as uh, um, uh, Allison mentioned, it does need to be revamped uh, that program a little bit and really looking at it uh, but there is a fee to it i want to say it's like 200 dollars, but don't quote me on that but there is information on the website currently so it's mm -hmm. it's definitely something that that in discussions with the team it definitely needs to be looked at um seriously to make sure you know it, it meets the current needs yeah it's currently 200 dollars, but it's mm -hmm. a uh prorated based on when you sign up for the permit is it the same yeah. fee for commercial and residential permits? No, um, commercial is an annual fee and mm -hmm. residential is $10 every two years. And that includes in the lots? Uh, no, the residential is um, just on designated streets. Uh, I don't think it has anything to do with where there are any parking meters. Mostly by the train stations, Commissioner. You see them in Glenside. You see them right around the train station area. So right. residents have a place to park. <laughs> okay, I guess we can revisit it as we start to move forward with the implementation. Mm -hmm. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Any other questions, Commissioner Pransky? I'm sorry. Am I correct that <clears throat> payment is still only Go possible ahead. through? An app on your phone. Commissioner Pransky, phone. I think you're frozen. Hey, Brad, you're frozen on our side. I'm moving. You can take off your video. You can barely I, hear you. I, 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 I heard the question about heard the, yeah, the, the currency. Uh, we're going to get to that. Just just give me one minute. We'll uh, we'll get to that. <laughs> I, I promise. <laughs> um, so just to, to finish up those lots, uh, we have the Bickley Road lot, uh, Eastern Road lot. Um, Having a, in the middle there, there is a, a, a barrier where we'll be able to place signage writing on the ground. Again, changing those spots from 27 two hour, four 12 hour uh, to 15 two hour spots and 16 12 hour spots. So greatly increasing the 12 hour spots there. Um, the last lot associated with this is the York Road lot north, um, which uh, to simply put it, and Jen, if you have anything to add on this, uh, it, it used to be metered where there, there used to be some parking meters there. Uh, but it is utilized by public work staff uh, during the day and they don't really get any money from it. So the, the idea is just to remove uh, the remaining meters uh, from this, this area. I don't know if Jan or chief, if you have anything to add on this. Nope. Yeah. Okay. Uh, covers it, Mike. Um, so that, that kind of contains that first memo for the parking lots. Um, the, the hope is to kind of have the, the approval to go ahead with this. And the reasoning why I'm asking that tonight is we need to give this information to Park Mobile to uh, start it. And one of the, the plan for implementation is we're looking to implement the lots first before we start moving um, to the streets. That's kind of what we determined to be the best uh, method to implement this to start it out. So my hope is that, that the commissioners would approve this tonight so we can get moving with the Park Mobile implementation and that would be starting in the lots. Any questions, commissioners? Back to my question. Commissioner Norris, did you have a question? Uh, no, I did not. No, okay. Was this uh, Commissioner Pransky? Yes. There you go. go. You're back. Go yeah. ahead. I never left. Um, I think Mike and most of the board knows I'm all in favor of technology and technological improvements. 
But I, my question remains, is the only way to pay for parking through a smartphone app or a mobile phone? Yep. So Commissioner, the, the next memo that I have is going to talk about parking kiosks. So in those lots, uh, we are just bringing to the board because that concern has been raised uh, by one or two commissioners to look at alternative methods. We did look into parking kiosks and I have some pricing information for you. And that's the, the memo that I have before you uh, to discuss that. I, I don't know, Commissioner Brockington, would you like me to go into that now? Or? No, well, what I'll do, I'll call for a vote on item 5A1. Before we go on to that, it won't be possible for me to vote on that without the rest of the. You want to know all of this? All right, then. All right, then. I will. We will go. Go ahead. Go ahead. No, no problem. Uh, so one of the other memos there is in relation to the parking meters um, and sorry, the parking kiosks. I apologize. I've been switching them up uh, lately, but uh, we currently have in those four lots, uh, we currently have kiosks. Three of those kiosks are down and not working. And uh, in conversations with the chief and Jen Clark, uh, they are not able to be repaired. They do not have the parts for them anymore. They are over 10 years old. Uh, so mm. we don't recommend, and it's not really feasible to get them fixed. Um, and they currently only accept uh, coin and cash. So I did look into new parking meters. They would both interface with Park Mobile. So people could either use the app or use the physical kiosk. Um, I did look, I did present um, two different visuals of kiosks in the agenda for you to look at, um, but more or less they would, uh, they'd be able to do cash, they would be able to do coin, card, tapless pay and integrate with Park Mobile. Um, and with that being said, they are uh, somewhat costly. They're about $10,000 uh, per kiosk. Mm -hmm. And then you also have to include in uh, the fee for the modem. So it would be about $40,000 to replace all the kiosks, and it would be about $3,000 a year for the modem fees um, on top of it. So I did look into it. I mean, this would be the way to go if we want to look at having kiosks, uh, kiosks in the township. It would be bilingual, uh, just some nice features to it, um, you know, and they would be up to date, and they would also come with a maintenance contract. So that means that we wouldn't have to be paying for parts every single time they would have a, you know a small maintenance contract one vendor gave three years one gave one so it's it's debatable but uh, one of them is the company that we currently use and one of them was the company that park mobile recommended uh, to us and they were actually cheaper um, so just wanted to present some options to the commissioners to discuss um, knowing the kind of the numbers on what it would cost for us um, in expenditure we did budget this um, we did budget in capital budget for it so it's not something that's completely unbudgeted. So, but I'll I'll take any questions on this matter. Hey, Mike, could you say again how many did you want at forty thousand each? Uh, no, no, no. So it's forty thousand total, estimated oh, okay. ten thousand each. Yes. Each. Okay. Thank mm -hmm. you. Uh, Jen, do, Jen, do you have anything, Chief? Do you have anything to add on this? Just that this option, we discussed this option in the committee, and this option gives us that flexibility that that several have you told me you were looking for. The option to use the coin, to use park mobile, to use a credit card, or gives us that flexibility there. It also would be the time if we were going to make this change now to do this now and upgrade this system. Um, we've had budgeted this. There's funds for this. Um, this program would be uh, designed with the, the funds we raised from this to go right back into the maintenance end of it as well. So um, it wouldn't be like we would be searching for that. This would be self-funded uh, through the revenue collected there as well. Um, but, I mean, this is one alternative we came up with to try to – to uh, address several of the concerns that the commissioners have brought to my attention and to Mike's attention and Allison's attention as well regarding uh, the flexibility needed uh, uh, with this program. So the four kiosks, obviously it would be much better uh, from a workload standpoint instead of doing all the meters that are spread out, only have to focus on four, uh, four locations and Jen could probably speak uh, better to that. But I mean, that would be certainly a lot more manageable on her end as well, I would think. And I assume we would be hoping that it would be less coins and cash because, and then more cards because I know that's sort of labor intense when it comes to collecting the coins. And that's what we're trying to get away exactly. from. Exactly. It is. It is. Yeah. Okay. I'm going to go with Commissioner Dwight Pedro Lewis, then Commissioner Thank Armin. Thank you. Uh, first question uh, one, um, Mike and team, I appreciate all that you're doing and the spirit in which you do it to bring us into the 20th century. 
um, with technology. Um, thank you for that. A couple quick questions. One, can you tell me what the revenues were for parking? Pre and I know we went over this, I just don't recall. Uh, what were the revenues for meters pre-COVID and last year? Sure. So um, I'll read them off to you real quick. Uh, to, and just to clarify, this was just from parking, not enforcement. Um, 2018 was 88,000 and change. 2019 was 74,000 and change. 2020 was 35,000 and change. 2021 was 14,000 and change. And 2022, it's not settled, but it's 11,000 and change. And currently, based off of our uh, numbers, we're currently around 6,000. Uh, in change. So it, it is uh, a pretty drastic decline from 2018 onward. So I would imagine your hope would be to get back to 80,000, but it's probably hard to project that. But uh, if you look at the past three years, it doesn't seem like putting out $40,000 for new kiosks. Makes sense. Um, and we may only bring in fifteen thousand dollars, but I'm just making that point. A uh, uh, couple other quick questions. You mentioned that there's a three-year warranty. Did you say three-year warranty? Did I hear uh, that? One of the vendors had a three-year warranty. Uh, one of them had a one-year warranty. Uh, the one that had the three-year was more expensive uh, by about three thousand dollars a piece. So it's it, it. We're not really finalized in looking at the product for the kiosk, okay. but I wanted to present some numbers to you based off of our current vendor and what Park Mobile recommended, just to give you some, some numbers and some visuals of the meters themselves and the features that would come with updated meters. Good stuff. Uh, let me ask you this. After the warranty, do you know what the annual cost would be? So it's, it's a little difficult to discuss annual cost just because it's as something would break. Um, I don't know if Jen can speak to that a little bit more. But I know, I think we kind of talked about potentially just a couple hundred bucks, maybe 500 bucks, um, you know, to kind of have uh, for each meter if it needed maintenance. But it, it's really as it breaks down and the hope would be that newer meters would break down uh, a little bit less. But uh, I don't know, Chief or Jen, if you have anything to add on that. No, I mean, I can only really speak to the cost of, you know, maintaining the current kiosks that we have. I imagine that a newer you know, higher tech kiosk, <clears throat> the parts and stuff are going to be easier to find. So the cost is probably going to be less, but I think a, a you know, budget of 500 would probably be, you know, a good safe number. Okay. One last question before uh, Commissioner Armin um, asks his questions. Um, if we don't do that right now, if we don't replace these four kiosks right now, we implemented the system, give it a good workout, see what we're up against. Um, could the four kiosks be replaced later or does it have to be part of the initial install? No, great question. Uh, they can be added as, as uh, whenever we wanted to. Um, both of these companies could integrate with Park Mobile. Um, and, and that's one of the things that they strive themselves on in kind of in learning about the company is that they'll work with pretty much any company in the space uh, they can work with. Um, you know, so it, it could be, you know, we could install these now uh, later down the line, or you could add meters on the streets if you wanted to, uh, sorry, kiosks, uh, kiosks, apologies. So, um, you know, it, it's, it really is whenever uh, it's decided, but, you know, we, we heard the commissioners and, and you know, heard the, the concerns. So we wanted to bring this up as, as a potential option uh, to be discussed. Thank you. Commissioner Armin. Yeah, thanks, uh, uh, Mr. Chair. Um, so, Mike, uh, Jen, Chief, uh, I'm, I'm wondering if we can accomplish um, uh, what, what it is we're looking for, which is both whether there's um, a need for these kiosks and whether they are actually going to work well for us uh, by using um, less than four. Um, so that's just a that's just a thought. I, I don't need an answer right now. But if you know, instead of using four, maybe two, 
you know, I know that there's two lots in Glenside. Maybe one of them has a kiosk, one of them doesn't. Um, and, and then the, you know, on on the other side of the township. So, just a thought, may, maybe save some some build up costs. And it, and if it really is getting the um, the usage that and the, and it's clear that the residents want it, then certainly we could always revisit whether we want to add those. So that that's just one thought. the The second thought I had is whether there's um uh, i know that with park mobile there's like a processing fee that's sort of built into the cost i wonder if there's any additional processing fee if someone were to be using a credit card on these kiosks or not um or whether the township has to eat that cost uh when when someone uses their credit card Great, great question there. Uh, so no, the the meter company actually doesn't. It's not a Park Mobile meter. They don't okay. make them. So it, you would actually just be paying your normal credit card fee uh, for it for for that processing. Um, so that, and that would be a standard fee. I, I don't have those in front of me, but I can get them uh, for you. But it would just be the standard fee when you park with uh, that integration. Just to quickly touch on that, that would mean that we could look up the plates. So Jen could go to the lot, type in the number for that zone, look up all the plates using Park Mobile's enforcement tool, but right. people will have paid using the kiosks and will have not touched Park Mobile at all. But it's it. an integration to make it easy for, for enforcement. Okay, so okay. so the, the resident is paying the, the fee, not the township. Yeah, so there, and and yeah, it's, it's just the credit card fee. There is no, uh, you know... Um, other fee for that it's just uh, understood uh, yes okay and then, and then my last uh thought or question <clears throat> is whether um these kiosk manufacturers permit uh like branding on the kiosk so perhaps we could get uh some of our local businesses to sponsor a kiosk and put their logo on the kiosk i don't know if there's if that's permitted by these manufacturers but um Cer certainly in Glenside, maybe we could get the Wawa to kick over uh, uh, some money to uh, to brand the the uh, the kiosk in Glenside, and maybe some other businesses may be interested in doing that as well. Yeah, we we own the meters, so once we purchase them, we own them, so we can okay. do whatever we want with them. Very good, thank you. Sounds good. Any other questions, That's, uh, Commissioner Pransky? <clears throat> one which is only going to give Mike migraine. Um, when we first started the conversation, did we look into smart meters as an option? Because they fit on existing posts and everything else. Yes, we, we did look into the uh, smart meters that would take credit card. Uh, it was about $160,000, which is what we uh, did, you know, kind of uh, budget for in capital, you know, because we didn't really know which way we wanted to go at the time. Um, but uh, here's the problem with that. It, it's still... Um, a lot of meters throughout the township uh, with one individual collecting and main, maintaining them. Um, you know, so it, it, it does become an issue there that you will have them break and you're paying for a lot of modem fees. Currently, the township only pays for the four modem fees where now you would have to have one every couple blocks for those um, for those meters. So we did look into smart meters. I even looked into the ones that have uh, license plate reading technology. Um, it, it's just extremely expensive. And with only having one person, um, you know, who, you know, able to maintain and do that, it just becomes a little difficult. I don't know, Chief, if you want to speak to that a little bit more. I think he's going to talk about uh, tapping into the ISDN line. Will you? <laughs> Go ahead. Yeah, I think the cost factor in that is what, uh, what steered me away from it. I don't know. We did the initial uh, cost analysis on that, and I, I thought that was not a good option for us. So Appreciate that was just my view on it. I appreciate it. Okay, great. So, Commissioner Pransky, do you have enough um, information? So, to, I um, I, all right, Commissioner yeah. Norris and then Commissioner Zygmunt, though. Yeah. I don't know if he, is that your hand up, Mitch? No? Okay, no. Commissioner Norris? Yeah, sorry to throw a, one more question here, but um, the the idea of spending that kind of money for, for these uh, meters uh, uh, doesn't excite me, to say the least. So my my question is, if we went with the Park Mobile, um, what happens if we don't provide an alternative, a cash, a cash alternative? We just simply go with the Park Mobile plan. 
Yep. So um, uh, there are uh, a lot of municipalities that do that, um, right. and they they do it in various areas. Um, so it is it is out there and it is being done uh, where you know you will just be able to use Park Mobile and being able to use Park Mobile. You know, I know we've talked about this, but you can use the app. Uh, you don't have to download the app. You can actually um, just go to a, a web browser on your phone. And if you don't have a smartphone and you have a flip phone, uh, you can call the number that would be on all the signage or text right. them. And you, at minimum, you just need a credit card or debit card and pay for your parking. And you can still re-up for parking and do all that uh, through the texting or phone call. Um, and from what I've been told, that can be done within about a minute um, to, to do that. So okay. those are the options if you just use Park Mobile. And and so under the, I'm going to say the rare occurrence where someone might not have a phone um, and they park there, um, what's going to happen? They can get a parking ticket. Um, can't we set up something that uh, for those people who complain and say, I got a parking ticket, but I, I didn't have cash, um, you know, that we say, send us a check or something. Yeah, I'll, I'll uh, let the chief answer that since that speaks to enforcement. Yeah. Actually, the easiest answer to that, the remedy to that is to challenge the, the citation in the court system and tell the court why you didn't, you know, uh, use the park service or, you know, pay for the meter there. And then the judge will make a determination if this is a violation. And that and that's worth it for 50 cents of parking. No, I guess I'm I'm proposing for perhaps uh, um, in those cases it just gets waived or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. But that's far less costly than than what we're proposing to spend on capital equipment. Thank you, Commissioner Thank you. Dwight Pedro Lewis. Yeah, one quick question: um, Are there no parking fee areas around the businesses? Are there streets where? there's no parking fee that you can park at no cost. Chief, I, I, I'll let you answer that. Yes, I mean, you're not gonna be right next to the business, but you could go a short distance away and park on a residential street and walk to wherever. If you wanna yeah. to go to El Lamont and Glenside, you could park on Keswick Avenue and walk up, say, for example. Um, there, are, there are options out there. My favorite spot, I had to give him a shout out. <laughs> don't, don't, don't say that, Chief. Don't say that. Don't advertise. Uh, I got to talk to you about that, Chief. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> All right. All right. So we're going to we're gonna move on with this. Um, we started off in new business. Um, it was item 5A1, which was for Park Mobile impl Implementation Update. I'm going to call for the approval of item 5A1, then we'll move on to two. Dan? Yeah, I'm just making sure I know what we're voting on. Yeah. We're voting yeah. on the this is just mobile, the update. This is just the update. Well, I don't know that we need to vote on this at all, though. But this is just an update. Yeah. This is a recommendation to authorize the staff. Right. It, yeah, it, it, this is for the the adjustment of the the number of parking spaces uh, that are closed. Right. So okay. So that right. Makes, so let's well, yeah, all so those in makes, favor of adjusting the two and the twelve hour parking zones to facilitate the mobile parking application program. Uh, there we go. Move certain parking meters. Say aye. 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 Are we going to move on to the number? We have one nay. One abstention. One so I'm okay. comfortable with the whole package. I'm just, I can't. Okay. We're going to move on to item five, um, two, to number two. Um, mm -hmm. Consider recommending the Board of Commission to approve upgrading the parking meters kiosks in four township parking lots to permit interface with the mobile parking application and to permit coin cash and credit card transactions. Number three, Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution amending the parking meter fee schedule to be applied to the new mobile parking applications. Any questions in reference to number two and to number three? Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. You have to vote on them separately. Yeah. We, we will do yes. separately. Commissioner Armand. Commissioner, Commissioner uh, one, one quick thing. There is a Right above uh, on that page, there's one more memo. If you don't mind, I apologize. I just, Did I? I just want to make sure that it's read for the meeting. Um, there, there is one more memo that was discussed at the beginning about removing meters at uh, two streets. 
uh, Spring Avenue between Park Ave um, and the driveway to Elkins Park train station. Uh, currently uh, four two hour limit spots and Montgomery Ave between Park and High School Road. And there are currently three 12 hour spots. So these would be removing the meters and they would go to residential permit parking. There is a list attached of the current existing um, residential permit parking areas that are that was on our website. So I, I, I just wanted to don't have that on. Yeah, I, don't have that I don't have that at all, Mike, at all. What you just said. Does any commissioners have that? Yeah, it was in the agenda okay. materials. All right, I did show right, mine. It's, it's right before the <clears throat> uh, the kiosk information. Maybe I scan. Yeah, that, that's why I just I wanted to make sure that was discussed uh, before it was voted on, since that was that's in the agenda and on there. I just want to make sure that's uh, uh, clear and there's no questions on. I'm not showing more minds. And also, just to be clear, um, if you do remove those parking meters and want to put them into the residential permit parking uh, program, that'll kind of go into the ordinances that are under discussion for yeah. six. Yeah, six uh, A. Six A. Okay. All right, so I'm going to go back. I'm going to reread number two. Consider recommending the board of commissioners and approve upgrading the parking meter kiosks in four township parking lots to permit interface with the mobile parking application to permit coins, cash, and credit card transaction. We, uh, we need to vote on that, Dan. Mr. Uh, Mr. Chairman, to discussion, if I may. Yes. So, um, thank you. Um, I would propose, I, I, I'm sensing some apprehension about the, the cost. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so um, while I would support four, if, uh, if, some, if it makes it uh, easier if, uh, on our finances and uh, to, to get this going, um, I, I would propose, I would move for two with, with uh, the option to expand if necessary. Okay, that's on, it's on the table to change it from four to two. Any other comments? Mr. Chairman? Yes, Commissioner Ziegler. It would make sense to Commissioner Armand to reduce the number, but it sounds like only one of the, um, only one of the uh, parking lots has little to no activity. So to me, I think the reduction should probably be I mean, four to three. three. Any comments on that? Commissioner Zygman felt wants to go four to three, and I think Commissioner Armin was four to two. I'm I'm okay with three. Uh, I just am trying to find the the middle ground here. Commissioner Rappaport. Well, I was I was going to go back to the two just because, uh, again, there, there's a cost benefit. I yeah. We we are nowhere close to paying for those. Um, oh. uh, for the hardware and the all the service stuff and the modems that go with it in terms of the revenue that it would generate. And the whole point, as I understood it, was to uh, redeploy our police uh, enforcement folks to other areas to save some money uh, and uh, you know reduce the aggravation of of this. And I I would my my concerns for other things were put to ease, knowing that you know some of the residents who still have flip phones and things like that still have their options. I I was thinking we would go Not to two it. or none. So none. Yeah. 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 So, yeah. I'm in favor of going to none. Uh, I'm well, in favor I, of going I think to the two is a good compromise. You have one in the Glenside area and one in the uh, Elkins Park area, I think that probably is is the right mix. So, right, so, so I'll, I'll go back to my motion that uh, we reduce it from four to two. Anyone has any other numbers? <laughs> Commissioner Norris is what Commissioner Norris is at zero. Zero. Yeah. I'm actually in, in agreement with Commissioner Norris. I'm at zero. And Commissioner, I'm, I'm sorry. I'm at that, zero. Okay, that's so we I'm have at three. zero right now, but let's implement the system. Let's see what right. we're working with. Right, right. You can that's always how I feel. Them. We can always add them. Right, and Commissioner Armin, you're at two. 
Yes. <laughs> and Commissioner. I'll go Zimmer's back to on. two. I like Commissioner Armand's idea. All right, Commissioner. <laughs> all right, so we have two. And Commissioner Rappaport. Yeah, I'm on the fence. I could go either way. So no, um, no fencing here. No fencing. Uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I, I, Commissioner Prince. We asked Commissioner Cherico about his opinion. Yeah. <laughs> I think he's still wide. He's out wide. <laughs> and I'm, just, I'm at five, or if I'm at five. <laughs> just to add, we, we will have to select the vendor and it will come up at the next uh, meeting, most likely, to vote on it as well. So just we, we can always change it, but I can at least get a, a quote uh, in order for that and, and pick a company, uh, hopefully one that would also meet CoStars or one of our cooperative purchasing agreements. So. All right, Commissioner um, Pransky, you're at five. No, I'm, I'm teasing her. We don't have five okay. places to put them. <laughs> no, I, I can't tell when you're joking. Your jokes don't even. Oh, you know, yeah, yeah, go right over. <laughs> <laughs> if we spend any more time on this, we're going to spend yeah. forty thousand dollars. Let, let's right. let's bring it to a vote. Yeah. The yes. Motion, there's a motion on the floor. So the motion on the floor. Um, again, are, are we going to do three, two, or none? That's the motion on the two. two. Motion two. for two. All in favor? Aye. 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 So that was three ayes. One abstention. One abstention. I'm I'm a nay. I'm a nay. I'm a nay. So we have so we have three three nays, three yays, and one Pransky. <laughs> <laughs> All right. It looks like the motion does not carry. Does not the motion carry. does not carry. All right, we're going to move I'm on. Just, I'm just concerned that we don't have all the information that we need because there are people who are going to have a problem okay. with this. Let's move along. Okay, we're going to move now. We're going to number three, consider recommending the Board of Commissioners adopt a resolution amending the parking meters fee scheduled to apply to the new mobile parking application. I think that's pretty simple. I think all, we can vote on that. Yeah. All those in favor say aye. 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 Great, aye. we're going to move on to new business. Um, I don't know how new it is because um, discussing the residential and commercial parking permit program, consider recommending the Board of Commission authorize the township staff to review Chapter 285, Vehicle and Traffic Article 3, Miscellaneous Provisions 285-40, Residential Parking Permit Program, Commercial Parking Permit Program, and make the recommendation to determine whether amend amend amendments should be made to reflect the current parking goals. Any questions on that? One question, Mr. Chairman. Yes, Commissioner. Well, we have an opportunity to, uh, and I guess this is to the chief, as much as anything, we have opportunities to add additional street parking if, if we are, can identify some either businesses or uh, property owners uh, with tenants that it would work to their advantage as well? Absolutely, yeah, that, that'll be part of the, the review process. You know, when you talk and the chief doesn't move his lips, I'm shocked. Uh, <laughs> I don't, We're I quite the act, the, aren't we? Yeah. Chief, he, uh... I, I have a question in reference to, can we give a little detail as to what the current parking goals are? Well, I think that would be part of the, the conversation um, through this ordinance review process. So we um, don't have actually goals set yet. Yeah, I mean, initially, I think we need to bring the ordinance in compliance um, to this uh, park mobile uh, process. As, as mentioned, there will be moving some of the parking meters and making them either residential or permit parking or no permit parking at all. And it's just free, free um, parking. Um, and I think trying to make sure that we have everything accounted for, whether the fees are correct, um, and, and make sure that it, it's in line with our current goals. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I'm going to call for the approval of um, item 6A1. All those in favor say aye. 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 We're moving on to item 6A2. Consider recommending the Board of Commissioners authorize township staff to review its fee schedule to determine if its residential and commercial parking permit fees should be revised to meet its current parking goals. <laughs> and again, um, the fees are $10 every two years for uh, residential permit parking and a sliding scale of $200 a year for commercial. 
um, one of the things we did an analysis for is the amount of revenue that we would collect, um, especially for 12 meter, meter parking, uh, would be more than $200 a year. So I'm not sure if that's something that we want to consider or if we're happy with the fees. So uh, we'll just want to take a look at that and make sure it's in alignment. Okay. All right. So I'm going to call for the approval of item 62. Six All eight two. Favor, say aye. 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 Great. That's the only thing that's listed for new business for tonight. Are there any additional new business items? Commissioner Dwight Pedro Lewis. Thank you. Uh, probably old business at this point, but I did reach out to Bill Ryan, Vice President of Einstein Government Relations related to the Einstein Elkins Park campus. He has agreed to meet with us. Fantastic. Thank you, Commissioner Lewis. Um, any other chief, do you have anything? Don't you have something coming up on May 15th? I don't know if you want to discuss. That's correct. We're kicking off our uh, community engagement efforts for 2023. We're starting with a uh, ice water ice with a, with a cop. All those kind of twists. I'm, try I'm trying to come up with a new one each time. But anyway, this will be at the uh, Elkins Park uh, Reader's Water Ice uh, located in Yorktown Square there. Um, and it'll be uh, Monday, uh, the 15th from 530 to 730. Uh, come on, have a water ice, meet your police officers. Uh, if you have any questions regarding the department, regarding our hiring practices, our diversity, any questions you have for me, I'd be glad to, to discuss with you. Um, uh, we'll be out there. Uh, we look forward to seeing the community out there. Like I said, we're going to try to spread this around uh, different locations throughout the township throughout the rest of the year. And uh, we had great success in the past with uh, a lot of these events. And I want to build on that success from last year uh, and get them out there. Fantastic. Um, any other items for new business? One chief, last I would, question. I, yes, go ahead, Commissioner Lewis. One last question for the chief. Chief, are there any vacancies? Do you have any vacancies in the police department? Yes, sir. Right now, we're in the process of completing background investigations right now on the Montgomery County Consortium list we have. Uh, so we're in the process of doing that right now. Uh, we're currently down uh, five positions right at the moment. We have two other officers out long-term disability at the moment that has to play itself out, as you know, uh, yeah. that, in this situation. So we're, we are working closely with uh, Heather Samuels and Allison Elliott to get these positions filled. They've been excellent, okay. helped to me, uh, and we're trying to move as fast as we can and as, as thoroughly as we can through that process to try to get the help here before the summer hits. Good. Thank Great. you. Good I'm question, sorry. Commissioner Norris, go ahead. Yeah, a real quick question, Chief. Um, if a Philadelphia police officer wishes to transfer into Cheltenham's police department. Is that a is that a lateral transfer or do they have to start at the bottom? Actually, we have a, a uh, process now where you have to apply, test for our department, regardless if you're a police officer or not. Um, well, that comes into play and is obviously your own view. What do you bring to the table? What can you do? I'm an experienced police officer. I have 10 years experience. You know, I just moved this community, whatever. However, that is, we'll factor that in then as far as what that what that candidate brings, you know, but we're always looking to uh, to pick up qualified individuals. We've been very successful, as you know, in our last hiring rounds, yeah. um, grabbing grabbing an officer here that was that was already you know seasoned up for lack of a better word, you know, uh, from the Philadelphia Police Department. Uh, we stole a couple gems from there, I think, in our last uh, hire. I'm always looking to do that as well. Um, I'm looking to diversify our department as well, so we're going to continue to reach out. Uh, to those uh, those friends that helped us last time. Um, I see us retesting shortly. The amount of, of candidates that okay. applied, I talked to the board about this before. I don't want to take up too much time, but, you know, the numbers are dwindling greatly, um, you know, from when even when I started uh, to now. So uh, I'm, I'm seeing this across the board in our region, not only in Cheltenham, but speaking to other chiefs, it's a challenge. It's a challenge to hire people into this profession right now. So, um, you know, we, were, we had great success when we gave our own test. I want to go back to that format. I want to go back and, you know, you know, reach out to all the resources we did the last time. I was very happy with that uh, way it went. Um, but we jumped into the Montgomery County pool because we wanted to keep a current list. And, you know, we had 200 some applicants from Pottstown to Cheltenham, which is terrible. It's terrible. Um, so we have a lot of work to do on that front to try to drum up interest uh, to, to explain what a worthwhile career this is worth pursuing. Um, so um, we're up to that challenge, but we have a lot of work to do there. Yeah, well, thank you. You, <laughs> thank you have you, our full support. And it, it came up when I was walking today. Uh, there was a 
Philadelphia police officer who's a Cheltenham resident, mm -hmm. uh, African American male, and he was uh, asking some questions. So I uh, told him to get in touch with you. But please thank do. You. Thank you. Excellent. Thank you, uh, Chief. I just wanted to bring something to your attention tomorrow, if you're available, between five and seven, Ashbourne Meadows is having sort of a meet and greet. Um, they're, they're bringing the residents together so they can meet each other. Um, I'm going over there. I was invited. If I wasn't a resident, and I would love to have you go over to meet sure. our new residents there at Ashmore Meadows sure. um, tomorrow. Um, so I think there would be a surprise to see the police chief actually show up. So um, it would be great for you to show up to answer questions and introduce yourself to the new residents sure. at, at Ashmore. Thank you. Glad to do um, it. Yeah. Any other new business items for public safety? Jess, I see your hand up. Jessica? Yes. Um, so while I was doing the um, orientation for the AEDs and the and hands-only CPR for the public works and the library, there were several uh, people that approached me about the possibility of um, holding a CPR class. Um, and they were uh, wondering whether or not the township would be um, interested in maybe sponsoring uh, a CPR classes uh, for their, uh, for the employees. Um, and I just wanted to bring that up and see if there was any interest before I continue on my way down that. I, can I ask you to reach out to um, our the director of parks and recs? That's something they used to do quite often. And I know they did it at the Rolling Community Center. I think he's that, on the call. Is he, Damien on the call? Okay. No, oh, if he's on the call, um, but can you guys connect? Because again, that's something I know Parks and Recs did years would do several times a year at Rolling Community Center, and then maybe it can be done now at, at Curtis Arboretum or somewhere yeah, like that. Absolutely, yes, yes, yes. We could definitely connect on that. We can, we could okay. touch. Base. No problem. Sounds good. Okay. Mm -hmm. Fantastic, fantastic. Um, if there's no more um, new business for tonight, I'm going to turn to our residents now for Citizen Forum for Public Safety. Um, you can just sort of put your hands up and we'll uh, call on you if I see any hands up for Public Safety. I don't see any. I'm gonna call for the adjournment for tonight's Public Safety meeting. All those in favor say aye. 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 aye.